Ready, everyone? Yeah, please. In Alhamdulillah, Muhammadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'manina man yadihillahu falamillana wa man yudlil falamillana wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام أن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعث إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار مرحبا بكم جميعا أهلا وسهلا We continue with the explanation of the four principles by the noble Imam Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Rahimahullah Taala Rahmatul Wasa. We are still in the introduction where the author mentions Rahimahullah Asalullah Al Kareem Rabb Al Awash Al Azim. أن يتولاك في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يجعلك مباركا أينما كنت وأن يجعلك منا إذا أعتني شكرا وإذا ابتلي صبرا وإذا أذنا استغفرا فإن هؤلاء الثلاثة ومن السعادة أن يسكى الله بالله من الجنس بالله رضي مجلس الثان that he takes you into his alliance in the life of this world as well as in the after. And that he makes you blessed wherever you may be. And that he makes you feel amongst those who when he is given, he is grateful. And when he is tested, he is patient. And when he sins, he seeks forgiveness. For indeed, these three matters are the signs of happiness. We covered the first portion of this introduction of him asking Allah Azza wa Jal by the name Al-Kareem in the description of him being the Lord of the Magnificent Lord and also Allah taking the individual into his alliance in the life of this world as well as in the after but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the wali, the guardian of those who believe. He removes them from darkness into the light. As Allah mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah wali wa ladhina amin yukhrijuhu min al-dhulmati ila al-nur. Allah is the wali, the guardian, the protector of those who believe. He removes them from the darkness into the light. And darkness here is in the plural of the Lamat. Because there are many paths of his guidance, shirk, bid'ah, ma'asi, and that which branches off from the three matters. 
As for the truth, the truth is one. So Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions light and the singular. To the light, not lights. So falsehood is of many different shape, forms, and functions. The truth is one. Similar to the hadith. Rabbullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu He said Khutta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Khutta Thumma qala hadha sabirana Thumma khutta an yameenihi wa an shimaini khutut Thumma qala hadha subil an tafarqa ala kulli sabir min shaitan yadu'ilay that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he drew a line on the ground and he said this is the path of the line he drew one line and said this is the path of the line and then he drew to the right and to the left different lines and then he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam these different paths the separate, the separated paths upon each, or at the head of each path, there's the devil, and shaitan, according to it. So when he came to describing the path of Allah, one line was drawn. And when he came to describing the paths of the shaitan, many lines were drawn. So the truth is one. That was comes from the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with the understanding of the Sahaba. It comes to the statement of the author, وَأَنَّ جَعَلَكَ مُبَارَكَ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتَ And that he, meaning Allah, he makes you mubarak, blessed. Wherever you may be. The word Al Mubarak means one or that which has been given Barakah. And the meaning of Barakah is Kithratul Khayr, an abundance of good. That is the meaning of Barakah. Kithratul Khayr, the Dawam of Him. An abundance of good, and it remains consistent with the individual. So that which is Mubarak is the description of the presence of Barakah. In that thing, or in that person, or in that place, or in that situation. And the Baraka comes from Allah. And Allah's name is the Baraka.
long-term work of sanctuary. There is no legislation to support that, and making it can to be a place that's considered Nirvana. Consideration is given to what the people say. So the tawfiq, and this affair is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is going to be Mubarak? Who places Mubarak? And all of that. But it's not left to the whims and the desires of mankind. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
Ali, who had an eye ailment, radiallahu an, the Prophet spat in his eye and rubbed it, and his eye became cured by the permission of Allah. And so there was barakah in the saliva of the Prophet, but that's something that is specifically for him. Allah gave him that. So the tahnik, for that reason, is not to be practiced with anyone other than the Prophet If it is done for the purpose of putting something sweet, then this is allowed for that purpose and not for the purpose of seeking barakah from the saliva. specifically for the Prophet remains for the Prophet. And not be given to any Shaykh from amongst the Shaykh or Alim from amongst the Ulama. For no one is on the level of the status of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. with 
يحدث بها ظاهرا وتصريفها في مرضات الله and using it or spending it in that which pleases Allah in the actions so whenever a person receives a ni'mah he acknowledges that the ni'mah is from Allah as Allah mentions in the Quran وَمَا بِكُمْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ is the religious but that doesn't take away that some worldly gains is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah blesses you with righteous offspring Allah blesses you with halal wealth this is from the worldly benefits righteous means that the life of this world is a, is a commodity and the best commodity from this world is the righteous, righteous woman or the righteous woman so it's a good it's a nightmare to have a righteous woman and righteous offspring is a nightmare so whatever nightmare we receive is upon us to be grateful. As Allah mentions, فَذْكُرُونِ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِ وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Therefore, remember me, I will remember you. It's a commandment from Allah. To remember Allah, and the reward, Allah is going to remember you. And if there was no greater or any other reward mentioned for knowing Allah, that itself would be sufficient. That if you remember Allah, Allah will remember you. Allah, that's the, that's the sufficient reward. But there are other rewards for remembering Allah. And then Allah says, and be grateful to me and do not be grateful. So we are commanded with gratitude. We are commanded to leave all being ungrateful. So Allah mentions again, we're not becoming it, we're taking it, whatever you have of a name is from Allah. So a person within his heart, he acknowledges that it is Allah who gave him that name. And one should never be arrogant to think that he or she brought about the name of his or her own. themselves as if they are the ones who brought about their blessings. How many people put forth many efforts to attain worldly benefits, even religious benefits and benefits, but they don't attain it? Like Abdullah bin Mas'ud he said to the people who were sitting in the masjid counting with the pebbles, the tasbih and the tahmeer and the takbir. They said, Ya Aba Abdurrahman, ma aradna ila al-khayr. Qala, wa kanna al-murida min khayla al-nusiba. He said, Oh Father of Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman and Mas'ud, we only intend a good. So he said, And how many of them amongst the people intend good, but never attain it? So, even if you strive, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to attain the guidance. And this is from the statements of the of the Mu'tazila. That if a person puts forth the effort, he's going to be guided. And we live on it yet. Why is that statement a mistake? Why is that statement a mistake? Now if a person 
he searches and he puts forth the effort, he's not going to make it. Hmm. What you say? Why is the more tesla? Why is the more tesla? Why why is the statement a mistake? So when it comes to relaying the ni'mah of Allah, 
the Mr. Doe's from the righteous, the good people, the people who are not known to be jealous people and envious of others. These are the people who tell so they, they make, make do on for you. And they make good for you. And they make, they make no increases. As for a shukur bin jawari, then you use the ni'mun to worship the man with you. For the man gave you wealth, pay your zakat. Take care of your family. Make your hajj. Give sadaqah. Build the masjid. Build the school. Build the books. Use the wealth to worship the man with you. If Allah he gave you knowledge, practice, and teach. If Allah has a man, he bless you with a righteous wife, honor and respect to you. And show gratitude by using the ni'mah to worship Allah with it. Which is really in reality, as one of the Mashaykh mentioned, it is bad mannerisms, so adab, that you use the name of Allah to disobey Him. So adab, it's bad manners. Allah gave you eyes, you look at the Haram. Allah gave you hearing, you listen to the Haram. Allah gave you the ability to speak, you speak with that which is haram. Allah gave you the ability to walk, you walk towards the haram. Allah gave you the ability of touch, you touch that which is haram. And you use your body for that which is haram. This is bad manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we use what Allah has given us to worship Him with, then Allah will increase us, as Allah mentions, in shakartu la azidan nukum. And if you are grateful, I will increase you. If you are grateful, and if we are grateful for the favors of Allah, Allah will increase us. So it's very important that we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which He has given us. With these three pillars, the gratitude, the heart, the tongue, and the body points. The next matter, we either have two days or better. A man who is tested with his patience. He tests all of his servants. He tests us with good and with bad. As Allah Azza wa mentions, Alif Lamim, Al Hasid al Nas, Al Mutwaku al Makul Amin, Wa Huma Yaftinun. Allah said, Alif Lamim, that the people think that they will be left to say, We believe. Tested. Allah as a majority tested believers, just like He tested the people at the palace. Those who have the most severe tests are the prophets and messengers. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, the shabba al nas al bala'an al anbiya. Thumma salihun, thumma antha, fa antha. Those who have the most severe tests are the prophets. And then the righteous, and then those like them, and then those like them. So the stronger your faith, the more severe it is. And when a person is tested, if he's a righteous person, then this is a sign that Allah loves the person and is good for him. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, "When you be the one who be خير, you should be the one." Whoever Allah wants good for, He afflicts him. He tests him. Puts him to trials and tribulations. I 
as for the disobedient and the corrupt, then that which befalls them is the punishment for them. And that's the deciding factor or the distinguishing factor between a test and a punishment. A calamity can hit a land. For some people, the calamity is a test. For some people, the calamity is a punishment. How do we know who is being tested and who is being punished? It depends on the individual. The statement of Allah, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُسِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ And whatever has befallen you from a calamity is from what your own hands have caused. This is for the sinners, the disobedient. As for the righteous, then that which Allah has affects them and tests them with is because Allah wants good for them and wants to raise their level. Because when they are afflicted with calamities, they know us from Allah and they are patient. As the Prophet of Allah, they will send a mention of Ajaban, the Amir How amazing is the affair of the believer. For indeed all of his affairs is good, but he said, Thaka illa lil mu'min. And that's for no one except for the believer. Ida asadatu sarra shakara. Fuwa khayru nahu. If something of happiness befalls him, he's grateful. And that's good for him. When asadatu darra sabra, fuwa khayru nahu. And if some hardships before him, some difficulty, he's patient. And that's good for him. So no matter what situation the believer is in, it's a good affair. Whether he's being given good or he's being tested with hardships, he's responding in the right manner. He's responding with gratitude, which is the first manner that was covered already. And when there's hardship, he responds with patience. This is for the righteous individual. Shaykh al Bani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and others from amongst the ulama, they have mentioned a mistake of the people. That when they see that a person is going through some kind of hardship, automatically the people say the person is being punished. A person who loses his job, they say, oh, Allah is punishing him. A person who goes to prison, oh, Allah is punishing him. That's incorrect. A person is sick. He has an ailment. Oh, Allah is punishing him. SubhanAllah, Muhammad, Yusuf alayhi salam, he was in prison. Was that a punishment from Allah? No. Ayyub alayhi salam, he was sick for 18 years. Is that a punishment for me? No, I don't know. Sometimes, Allah tests an individual who He loves with that which can be used as a punishment for criminals. But in His situation, is not a punishment. It's a test, 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 only to raise the status. Sheikh Sulaiman Abu Haydi, the Prophet of Allah Ta'ala, mentioned, Therefore, the rule is that when you see a Muslim being tested with a murder, then we should have good thoughts that Allah as a Wajal wants good for that person, and he's raising that person's status. As for our own selves, when we are tested with another, we should first think that it's from our sins. As the Salaf of Fudel ibn Ayyad, he said that, I see the traces of my disobedience in my wife riding these children. He accused himself. 
He then take your eyes or your eyes, trust in me to raise my status with my life. Like no hamlet, a righteous man in the life is. And they look at themselves and accuse themselves of falling short, and this is the punishment for falling short. So again, we're looking at others, and these people are known to be righteous. We give the benefit of them, and the Ramah is testing them to raise their status, and the Lord is good for them. As for ourselves, we don't give ourselves the benefit of them. Rather, we say that this is due to our sins. upon the test number one restraining oneself from being angry with the command of the law it's the first one Yeah. 
salvation that we do to your brothers. But if you want to make going for you, she thought about it and responded quickly to the temptation. That's the price of the patient. Just make the other materials don't come up with me when we have the seizures. So she didn't go for the immediate relief. She was patient and was pleased with Allah's decree and acceptance for that promise. So I was said, if you want to be able to it escapes you right now. Specific Sahabi, I know that Ibn Abbas said the river wants to look at a person or the people from a person from the people of Paris and look at the dark skin right there. And you know, it was hard and then he mentioned the narration. So one should not have any hatred towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't complain. There are three types of complaints. One complaint that's the best type of complaint, one that's in the middle, and the one that's the worst. The best type of complaining is when you complain to Allah against yourself. Oh Allah, I'm a weak slave. I'm falling into sins. Please help me to rectify. Or oh, I'm complaining to you against myself. Due to my That's the best type of complaining. That you complain to Allah about yourself. That which is in the middle is when you complain to Allah about the people. Or oh, Allah, so and so is oppressing me. Or oh, Allah. The worst type of complaining is when you complain to the people about Allah. They can't remove the calamity anyway. If Allah is decreeing something for you, then it's going to be there. So, so do not complain to the people against your Lord, for they cannot help you. Lastly, is restraining one's body parts. receives news of uh, the death of a loved one. A lack of patience would be to beat the cheeks and to wear and to tear off the clothing and break dishes and the legs. This is haram and this is from the behavior of Jahiliya. And the Prophet said, Allah said, I'm forbidding this type of behavior, the beating of the cheeks, the tearing of the clothing. Which is similar to pulling out one's hair and other than that. And this is not a lot. The last matter. Repentance is obligatory when one leaves. 
goes off that which is obligatory on those and that which is prohibited. That's what Torah is for. You have a Torah that's wajiba, a Torah that's manduba, and a Torah that's haram. The Torah that's wajiba, the Torah that's obligatory, is making Torah from leaving off an obligation or a duty and a responsibility that was upon you to carry out. Like a person, he misses one of the five that he prays at the proper time without an excuse. A person has to make Torah for that. A person, his wealth, the wealth he has reached, the Nisar, the year, Islamic year has passed over, he didn't pay the zakat, he doesn't have an excuse. He has to make Torah for that. Ramadan came and went, a person went and fast. No excuse. He has to make Torah for that. So any obligation that is upon the person, that he abandons, it is a must of the person make Torah. Also, if you indulge in that which is prohibited, a person who tells a lie has to make Torah. A person who commits zina has to make Torah. A person who steals has to make Torah. A person who falls into bidah Shirky has to be Torah. This is the Torah that is Vajibu. The Torah that is Manduba, recommended, is when you had an opportunity to perform a supererogatory act, but you let the opportunity pass you by. It's recommended in this case to make Torah. Torah for what? Torah for allowing the chance for you to do good to pass your body and you didn't take advantage of it. It's not mandatory to make this type of Torah, but it's recommended. And the last category of Torah is the Torah that is Haram. The Haram Torah is making Torah from doing that which is good. As an example, for making, making Torah from doing that which is good. As an example, you pray the five of the prayers in the masjid, in Jamaah. At the end of the night, you say, stuck for me, I'm not going to do it. And you forgive me for praying the five prayers in the masjid, in Jamaah. Now that's how the Torah is haram. Why? Because from the conditions of Torah, is regret and acknowledging that what you did was wrong and the firm resolve never to do it again. You can't have that type of feeling towards that which your mom has legislated for you to do. These three categories of Torah were mentioned by Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah in the book of Torah on that which he dealt with istighfar. When these two terms are mentioned together, they have different meanings. When these two terms are mentioned separately, they have the same meaning. Similar to Islam and Iman. Similar to Bir and Taqwa. Similar to uh, Fuqaha and Masakin. These terminologies when mentioned separately, they have the same meaning, but when mentioned together, they have different meanings. When Torah and Istighfar are mentioned together, Istighfar is for that which has passed. That you're seeking the forgiveness of Allah for that which was already done, and that Allah covers the sin and protects you from the evil effects of it. 
and Toba is for what's in the future, that Allah protects you from falling into that sin again. But when Toba is by itself, it means all of that. And when Istighfar is by itself, it means all of that. The conditions of Toba are eight. Number one, Islam. The first condition is Islam. Number two, Ikhlas. Sincerity. Number three, the Toba Qabr al Hurun al Waqt. Making Toba before the time of Toba has expired. And that's divided into two categories. Number one, at the time of death. And number two, when the sun rises from the west. If you are alive when the sun rises from the west, the time of Toba has ended. dying before that time, then at the time of your death, the door of Torah is closed. <coughs> Number four, and Madam, regret. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and Madam of Torah, that regret is what is total repentance. Number five, and Etiraf. Acknowledging that what you have done is wrong. And there's an important point here. Sometimes a person may regret what he has done, but he doesn't acknowledge that what, it, what he has done is wrong. Meaning the person regrets the outcome or what was done. He may have hurt someone, but he doesn't view it as being wrong. Or sometimes a person view their action as being wrong, but they don't regret it. You say, I know I was wrong, but I don't have no regrets. That's not the problem. So we have to have both. We have to have an madam, we have an anti Regret, and acknowledging that what we have done is incorrect. How many is that? Five, number six. Is that the kind 
بشه ورود جوائد از دلاله از کم بشه مکابل نموسه ورود جوائد
ايه التحلل التحلل is that which is connected to the rights of the people that if you have violated the people and taken away their rights then you have to return their rights back to them in order for the Torah to be complete here's a question for you a person who steals 10,000 of this he knows he's wrong he's a Muslim he's sincere he's making tawbah he regrets what he did he knows he's wrong he's repenting before the time is up he has the resolve he's never going to do that again but he keeps he takes the money and he goes shopping is this tawbah complete? He, he says he's wrong he knows he's wrong now and he feels bad for what he did and he, he should say he will never steal again but he takes the money and goes shopping is the table complete? based upon the eighth condition of returning back the rights is the table complete? why not? what does he have to do to make the table complete? time you violate a person, you have to return their rights back to them. The scholars mean, if it's a matter of backbiting or slander, then you will go to the person and apologize. You will go to the person and apologize, especially if they know. If they know, you go to the person and apologize. If they don't know, you can go to them and apologize if there is no fear of there being a greater harm. Some people, if you tell me, uh, uh, say something about what? And then it, it turns into something else. Don't, don't tell them. But for sure you have to go back to that gathering or those people and you tell them, you know, I said something about my brother or our brother, it was inappropriate, I repent, I shouldn't have said that, so please don't relay that on me. I was wrong to say that. And also, the scholars mentioned, give sadaqah in the name of the person that you have wronged. For sure, you want to go back to the people. You want to go back. If you shamed and slandered them or backbid them in a crowd, you want to go back to that crowd and speak good about them and retract that anger. That's a part of the talk. But if you have a relationship with the person that you can go and talk to, the person is not going to lead to a fight, an argument, or a cursing of one another, then you go to the person and seek the, their body. So these three matters, as mentioned by uh, Sheikh al-Islam, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, and actually that statement is actually from Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Qayyim Al Jaziyah. And he mentions that for a Lincoln, and it will have said on the Abdul Allah Sa'adati in the Bishukri Allah. نعناء الله تبارك وتعالى والصبر على بلائه والاستغفار إذا وقع في الذنب فأنوان السعا فأنوان سعادة العبد هذه الأمور فالسكارة زي منشن it is not possible for the servant to attain happiness except by being grateful for the bounties of the law, being patient upon his tests, and seeking forgiveness when the person falls into sin. For the signs of happiness or the happiness of the servant is in these affairs, being grateful when you are given, and the ashukr ar al والصبر على البلية والاستغفار وتوبة إذا قاف الذنب. Being grateful upon when you are given, being patient upon the test, and 
and seeking the forgiveness of Allah and turning to him in repentance when the person he commits a sin. So the author Rahimullah he says, Indeed, these three matters are the signs of happiness. Shara Ta'ala will stop at this point. Whatever is correct. And the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And whatever is incorrect, it is for myself. And subhanaka Allah wa bihamdik. Inshallah, Allah ilaha 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 